Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today, we talk RC racing evolution. Let's get going. Okay, welcome back. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about the evolution in racing. Now, you see that I have an RC car here in front of me, but before we get started with the RC car environment, let's talk about Formula One. I'm not a diehard Formula One fan, but I love to watch Formula One racing all the time. If you look back over the past few seasons, we'll see that there have been really one primary dominant team, and that's Mercedes. You're talking about Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, and they have just put on a clinic over the last few years. In fact, let me just take a second and show you their actual results from the 2015 season. This was actually taken from Wikipedia, and you can see that they were just ultra dominant. Now, let me just pose a quick question for you guys. If the Red Bull team owner could walk in and purchase the exact car that Mercedes is using, do you think that Mercedes would be as dominant next season as they have been for the last several previous seasons? The answer is no, of course, right? They would level the playing field instantaneously, and so everybody would then have to go back to the drawing board and search for that competitive advantage. But they can't do that. So Mercedes continues to march along dom in a very dominant fashion, just collecting victories. Now, RC racing is completely different. In Formula One racing, clearly someone creates an advantage. As long as it stays within the confines of the rules, then they, they win. It, sooner or later, somebody else figures it out and then they catch up. Now this can take a few months, or in Mercedes' case, it seems to be taking a few years. But let's talk about the RC environment. When you actually buy an RC car, we can actually take a car and if someone else is beating us, you can go buy their car today and evaluate it to find out why it's so good. And so what we've ended up with is really a, a unique environment in the radio control racing community where we pretty much have the fastest evolving form of racing simply because manufacturers have the ability to get their hands on every other platform out there. And I think that's pretty unique and pretty cool. The downside to that is I think that a lot of people get frustrated when they see a lot of platforms heading in one direction. Usually what happens, I've talked to a whole bunch of engineers inside the industry and basically what happens, whether it's a two wheel buggy or an eight scale buggy, certain traits and features tend to create winning, winning platforms, winning geometries. And so I don't think it's a secret that we've seen so many cars fall into like say a Mugen style of pillow ball front suspension geometry. I mean, we've got the associated car, the Mugen car, the S-Works car, the Durango car. All of these cars are using pillow ball front suspensions. Now I wanna share something with you. The Mugen car, it's not immune to being influenced by other cars either. The Mugen car uses a wide rear pivot. If you look at all the MBX6 and older generations, they had a very narrow pivot with a very long arm. Well, the new wide pivot, where did that come from? That came from a low C car. So there is no question that all these cars, all of them, in one fashion or another, have been influenced by each other. The issue that, I, that kind of frustrates me is when I see tons of people going online and hating on one company or one platform when they're all doing it, some to a lesser degree, you know, some a little bit more often. I can tell you from experience that two cars that look the same, if they're made by different manufacturers out of different metals, different plastic, different molds, different drawings, they're not gonna drive the same. They may be similar in nature, but they're not gonna be identical because you just can't capture every single little detail. If you miss a measurement by a millimeter or half a millimeter here and there, it all adds up to a completely different driving experience at the end of the day. And this is no different for cars than it is for tires. A lot of times we'll see tires that have kind of led the way and then other manufacturers have no choice but to jump on board and create similar tires so that their own teams can compete at big level races and of course to provide products to, to, to customers that want to fly the flag. Now even just like with cars when you see a tire that looks identical to another tire more often than not it isn't. The tread pattern is spaced a little bit more loosely or a little bit more tightly. The pin depth is a little bit higher, a little bit lower. The carcass fits just a little bit different. Of course, the rubber is always gonna be a little bit different. So even when you see a product that looks very similar, very often it just isn't. And in some cases it works a little bit better, some cases it works a little bit worse, and in a lot of cases it has its day on specific tracks where it's better than the original and other tracks where the original is better. So I guess what I'm trying to share with you guys is that I think that what we end up having here in the RC industry is the fastest form of evolution in a racing environment because all manufacturers have access to all other manufacturers' products. And that really is a good thing because it's allowing manufacturers to bring you guys, guys like you and I, the very best products that work the best. 
So what's the moral of the story? In my opinion, the fact that all these manufacturers are competing in all areas of the market, whether it's cars, tires, engines, electronics, because everything's evolving so rapidly, it's creating better products for end users just like you and me. We're getting higher quality servos, higher quality kits, better geometry, cars that handle better, tires that have more grip and last longer. And so overall, I think that the evolution thing is really good. And I don't think we should hate on these companies for simply trying to race and win because that's really what they want to do. When you're going, believe me, if Red Bull could walk into the, if Red Bull could walk into the Formula One store and buy the Mercedes car tomorrow, they would buy one right here, right now in order to win. They just can't do it where we can. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. I just want to say thanks again for watching my videos. I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this video, you'd be doing me a huge favor if you could either like, comment, or even better, subscribe. I post a lot of stuff on social media like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, stuff like that. So if you want to catch up with me, I'll post this stuff up for you. And you can come on over, add me as a friend, follow me on Instagram, and you'll be able to see things that just don't make it to YouTube. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, you decided to stick around and hear the red body story, huh? All right, nice. So you guys all know that I do the white body thing, and there are a variety of reasons that I do the white body. It's just, it's easy to see when you're reviewing a lot of vehicles. It's simple, you know, there's no, it's not rocket science to paint a body white, it takes 10 minutes. But I was going to a race at Trackside uh, in Wisconsin a few years ago, and this car was brand new. I had never even ran this car, to be honest with you, but I knew that Ryan Cavalieri would be there, and I knew that practice was super, super busy. Like every time this race comes around, it'll be called the Associated Race this year, but back in the day it was called the Spectrum Race. Anyways, I was taking this car, I had never ran it, and I wanted to be able to get out on the track and run cleanly. And so, Ryan Cavalieri's practice body is almost this exact same color scheme. They kind of nicknamed it the Red Rocket or whatever. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to paint this thing red, put some stickers on it, because I don't ever run stickers. And people are going to, when I'm on the track, is, people could think that this is Ryan Cavalieri. Not by the driving, of course, but just by the paint scheme. But anyways, I thought it would be hilarious and that people would pull over for me. And what's hilarious is they actually did, but then when I you know, stuff it in the pipe in the very next corner, they figured it out pretty quickly that I wasn't Ryan Cavalieri. But anyways, I painted it red, put the yellow associated stickers on it, just so that I could imitate Ryan Cavalieri, so that I'd have a little bit easier time in practice trying to get my, get my head around this car. At the time, I, I got my butt kicked anyway. So anyways, that's the story. Hope you guys got a kick out of it. We'll see you guys later.